up everyone this is anthony with trigger warning conjugate welcome back to another part of our question and answer series that we're doing on the instagram i hope you guys enjoy trainer stan asks can you explain how to take a deload when training following the conjugate system if you are feeling beat up yeah so basically uh given the fact that there's kind of a deload worked into every week um with like your speed work you shouldn't feel incredibly beat up if you're doing all your recovery stuff that you need to be doing. So if you're eating enough, sleeping enough, you should be fine. Um, and being like, you know, smart with the volume. Uh, now, if you take care of all of those things and you're still feeling beat up, um, I have two easy ways to get away around if you come in and you're feeling like shit. So basically, if it's a lower body day, <clears throat> just do some belt squat, hamstring curls, reverse hyper, call a day, restorative stuff, go home, sleep, eat, live to fight another day. If it's upper, um, you know, bamboo bar, some pull apart, some push downs, um, and that sort of thing, more restorative stuff, go home, eat, recover. Um, now, as far as if it's like a long-term thing, you felt beat up for a long time, cut your volume back on your main days and then add in small workouts on your off days. Uh, what that's going to do is it's going to help heal you and that's also going to bring up your gpp if your gpp is higher you're not going to get as beat up no matter what the volume is so you need to work on that while not kicking the shit out of yourself so um add in the extra little workouts and that should help a lot you just have to be careful monitoring monitoring your volume add stuff in slowly and make sure you're taking something away from the main day and that'll spread it out help quite a bit um, AJ Worm asks, when deadlifting conventional, will a single ply suit be better than a multi ply suit? <clears throat> um, my personal opinion is pulling conventional in gear is typically very difficult, and most people have worse form pulling in gear conventional than they would if they just did it raw. It makes lockout harder, it makes getting the bar without a rounded back harder obviously people do it and there's obviously been people who have been successful i generally say if you're going to pull conventional maybe put on a pair of single ply briefs um if you want to protect your hips or get a little help off the floor or whatever um but definitely a single ply suit if you if you were going to do it single ply suit not a multi-ply suit maybe two plies in the back single ply in the front so it doesn't get bunched up in your hips and get in the way you want to make sure the legs are short so that lockout um you don't get all clustered up and you know not be able to get your hips through Rado Peaches asks, any tips on creating more hip tension for conventional deadlifts in a single ply suit? I've seen the Clint Darden video, shout out Clint, that guy's awesome, where he breaks down how the hips push down slightly as you break the bar off the floor, but always looking for new info to improve my suit work. So as I said before, honestly, I think most of the time pulling in a, in a suit conventional, it gets in the way more than it helps. Um... But something that I found, tension in hips, it works for sumo as well. Um, wearing the straps a little more off to the side, when you wear them in here, um, you have a tendency that you'll shrug up because you feel the tension. If you put them out on the edge of your shoulder, what it's going to do is it's going to push your shoulders down, which is going to make your arms longer and also help keep your shoulders back. So with a conventional pull, um, it's a good way where you can get more you can get your straps on tighter But they're not going to hinder you as much which will create more tension in the suit towards your hips Help you get off the floor easier and it'll make your arms longer, which will make your pull shorter um, Walsh underscore lifts throws Asks breaking in a single ply deadlift suit Do you recommend introducing it into training with gradual volume work or throwing it on for full max effort days periodically? I mean if it's a tight suit I mean, single ply is going to break in pretty easy. Um, so if it's a tight suit, you know, you're not going to wear it for speed work. If you're running a conjugate method, throw it on. I would say start pulling off of blocks, maybe a three inch block one week. And then the next time you put it on, you might take it off a two inch block um, down to the floor. Um, <clears throat> typically don't need much breaking in. Um, it's almost good that they're stiff. Depends on how tight it is. Now, if it's super tight, you know, you might want to put put it on straps down and pull your speed pulls that way, help open the hips up a little bit. Um, but if you're going straps up, I wouldn't do any volume with it. I would do more a max effort workout, um, starting off of a kind of high block so that it's, you know, you can get to the bar and be in good position. Co Diddy asks, 
How often should people use hook grip in their training? Um, if you are a guy who's gonna pull hook grip, what you need to do is you need to figure out how often you can do it without ripping your thumbs. So if you know that the grip is not an issue, but you are going to pull hook grip, a lot of those guys will pull with straps so that they're pulling double overhand as much as possible. Um, so they're used to that sort of leverage. Uh, if you're figuring out if you can pull hook grip, um, that's something you're gonna have to go week by week and see how long you can go without ripping your thumbs or tearing you know, calluses. Um, so it's a case-to-case -case basis. As far as grip strength is concerned, I found one of the best ways to work grip strength is if you're doing bent over rows, cable rows, lat pull downs, take your thumb out of it and just use this part of your hand. Um, that's helped me keep my grip strength up so that it's not really an issue for me. Uh, whether you're hook grip or not, that's something that you could utilize. So I um, hope that helps. Uh, Zach.T1800 asks, why do you have geared people bench with no pause on raw training lifts? Because we don't really have to pause the same way that raw people do. Um, what I like to see is people stay big, sink the bar just a little bit, and then press it um, in one fluid motion. So what that's gonna teach people is to stay big even though the bar is gonna be creating pressure on their chest or their belly. Um, that's gonna help with that last inch in a shirt. Uh, when all the pressure's there, you can stay big and still pull the bar down. Um, as far as pausing, there's really no pause in a shirt, right? The shirt kind of stops you in the bottom. It just has to come to a, it, it has to rest. It has to stop moving and you'll get a press command. But it's not like a one Mississippi as it is with the raw people. So the big problem I see though with geared people training raw lifts is they'll bring it down slow and at the last two inches, drop it and bounce it. So that's not what you want. You want to be in control the whole time. You just don't have to necessarily pause it the same way a raw person would do in competition. Underscore power houseman underscore asks on board presses Is it best to slightly touch the board or let the barbell sink into the board? What are the advantages or disadvantages of each? So I kind of just went over that with Zach's question um, If you're a raw lifter you want to pause on the board the same way that you would pause on your chest So if you're a sink and heave person do that to the board if you're not then don't as far as equipped people, if you're training raw, I think they should sink it into the board a little bit, but not collapse. You wanna sink it and stay big the whole time um, and sort of refer back to that last question where it's gonna teach you to stay big when you're bringing the, sh the bar down into a, a shirted press. Um, let's see here, War Daddy 181 Difference pulling in a Leviathan or Inzer Fusion Sumo, obviously. So I have experience in this. I've pulled <coughs> in a white canvas, in the Ultra Pro and in the Fusion. Um, Leviathan, I know people like because it does get a lot of pop. Those straps are rough. So if you get to the bar in good position, it's gonna give you a lot of, out of the bottom. Uh, same thing with, a, um, with an Ultra Pro. It's a lot of suit. So some people wear briefs under them, some don't. Um, some wear like single ply briefs underneath. And then a Fusion, you know, you can get it two ply, single ply. I like wearing two ply briefs with a single ply fusion on top of it. So I have three plies in my hips, but it's not a bulky suit and I can still get a nice strap out of it. Um, I think sometimes for deadlifts, less gear is better, uh, especially if you're a bigger guy uh, or girl. Um, lockout can kind of get cumbersome if there's a lot of gear there. So if you have two ply briefs with a you know, an old school canvas on that's a lot of, and you have short arms, you've got to get it over the canvas to lock it out. It just can kind of turn into a clusterfuck. So um, I would say the biggest difference that I found is that in a fusion, I have an easier time getting to the bar in position, which is the biggest part of a deadlift. I would rather wear less equipment and get into position than have a bunch of equipment on and not get into good position. Okay, so that wraps this up. I hope everybody learned something from this video. If you guys have anything specific you'd like us to go over, feel free to reach out. We love helping people get stronger.